Thank you, Maria, for your very kind introduction and for the invitation to be here with you tonight. Good evening, DSA. Good evening. God, I don't think they gave you guys enough food for dinner. <laughs> Let's see if we can do better. Good evening, DSA. Good evening. There you go. Well, first of all, let me say thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be here tonight with you. It is a tremendous honor to join you for a discussion about how we fight for economic justice and for good jobs for everyone in this country. I am proud to be associated with you because it is progressives like you who are, who are in the front lines of battle today. But you lead, not just for you, you lead for all working families, you lead for your neighbors and for your communities. Now more than ever, we need your leadership because this is a tremendously difficult time for all working people in America. Across our country, more than 25 million Americans are looking for work and cannot find it. 22% of all children and a record 46.2 million Americans are living in poverty today. In this, the richest country in the world. Millions of Americans are losing their homes and their hope for the future. Our public service workers are under attack, not only because of soaring deficits and declining revenues, but because of a concerted right-wing attack on workers' rights. Times are really tough for working families. But instead of fixing the problem, many of our nation's leaders are busy catering to the corporations and the wealthy. Corporations like Verizon, a company that reported $24 billion in profits over the last two years. A corporation that cut 20% of its workforce. And a corporation that has not paid a dime in taxes. Not one thin dime. Now let's think about that for a minute. Each and every one of us in this room is paying more taxes than Verizon. And the sad part is they are not alone. There are dozens and dozens of other corporations who are also deadbeats and are not pulling their weight in this country. And I say to you, that is flat wrong. That is not right. Because as wealth continues to stockpile at the top, workers' wages, haven't gone up and their benefits are disappearing. Today, we have more income inequality than only three other countries in the industrialized society. Only three countries have more income inequality than we do. Mexico, Turkey, and Chile. One percent own 20 percent of the wealth and going up. And in fact, we are worse than 30 other industrialized countries. We are worse than Slovenia, Austria, and Spain. The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, and the middle class is shrinking. And that is not something to be proud of. Because we 
do not have a wealth problem. We have a problem with how wealth is being distributed. Many workers in this country are now being held from capturing the American dream. The American dream, a vision for a future that my family and I immigrated to this country to achieve. I'm an immigrant from Mexico. And I came to this country because I had heard that if you came and you work hard and you did the right thing, you and your children would have a better future. But you know that dream that my family came here to achieve is in danger of becoming extinct because right-wing politicians have used immigrants and scapegoats to, as scapegoats to distract workers from the fact that corporations and the super-rich are absconding with America's wealth. Look at what's happening in Alabama right now with an attack on immigrants. Alabama, a state with a tragic history when it comes to dealing with people of color. Now we thought, and the Chamber of Commerce in Alabama tells us that that's all in the past. They are a new state. But unfortunately, I think that the old Alabama has reared its ugly head again. Today, November 11, 2011, people who look like me can now be stopped for law enforcement officers simply because of what we look like. And we can be detained and jailed if we cannot prove our citizenship and residency on the spot. Children, children are being asked in school what their and their parents' legal status is. Imagine the fear in a six or seven year old child, the principal in your school approaches you and asks you about your legal status and your family's legal status. Brothers and sisters, these types of laws are wrong and they are un-American. But let me tell you, immigrants are fighting back and we are winning. This past Tuesday, we recall the Republican author of Arizona, Senate Bill 1070. Senator Russell Pierce wanted to expel immigrants and he wound up being expelled from office himself. Yeah. Senator Russell Pierce, his history, because he misjudged the American people. He thought that his xenophobic anti-immigrant agenda was the people's agenda. But he was wrong. That's not who we are in America. We are a people who believe in fair play. We believe that everyone deserves respect and that it is wrong to use the legislative process to discriminate against people who want nothing more than to have an opportunity to claim their own little piece of the American dream. Securing comprehensive immigration reform has to be one of progressive America's top priorities, not just because it will benefit immigrants, but because fixing this broken immigration system to ensure, to ensure that we stop corporations from uh, preying on voiceless workers is in the interest of all workers. A comprehensive solution is good.
good for our economy. When employers are forced to play by the same rules and pay their fair share of taxes, then the wage and labor standards of all workers will rise as a result of that. When immigrants win, we all win. Brothers and sisters, right now in this country, there is a big game going on that we all know. You may remember it. It's called divide and conquer. Now, I think we've all seen that movie. We know how it ends. And it ain't good for us. It ain't good for us. We cannot allow ourselves to be fooled, diverted, bamboozled, or discarded. If we are to win good jobs in a just society, then we need to join together to speak out with one voice against the attack on immigrants, on women, on gays and lesbians, on collective bargaining, on students, and on our, and on our environment. And we as progressive leaders also have to stand up to the devastating cuts that politicians are undertaking. Just a few months ago, Congress passed legislation that cut programs that cost Americans 1.8 million jobs. Now, the so-called Super Committee is poised to cut millions more from Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and other programs. Brothers and sisters, the fact is that many Americans depend on these programs, and when you cut them, you literally cut their lifeline. Social Security alone helped 20 million seniors and disabled adults avoid poverty. We can no longer let the right wing and the 1% define who we are and what our national agenda should be. We have to turn the conversation and take hold of the future. We have to ensure that everyone pays their fair share to make sure that they invest in good jobs for working Americans. You know what we could do? If we end subsidies for oil and gas companies in this country, with that money, we could create 500,000 new jobs in this country. Those are the same oil companies that are raising the price of gas to over $4 a gallon. And if we add tax breaks to companies that offshore jobs, we could create another 300,000 jobs. And if we end the Bush tax cuts, and restore our tax rates to the way they were in the 1990s, we will have another $629 billion over the next 10 years to invest in American jobs. Brothers and sisters, we need to change the debate in Washington and all across this country. We need a new agenda for America, an agenda that provides good jobs, as Maria said. Jobs that you can raise a family on. An agenda that guarantees affordable health care. An agenda that protects public services in our communities. An agenda that provides opportunity to all, regardless of immigration status. An agenda that ensures that after a lifetime of hard work, we can retire with dignity. An agenda that ensures a better future for our children. This is the American dream that brought our ancestors to America. That is the American dream that inspires us. That is the future that our families need and deserve. Brothers and sisters, as we stand here tonight, if we are to win, we need to organize like never before. We need to speak up for our rights. 
the feeble voice of one needs to become the roar of millions, so strong and so powerful that we will be heard. We need to take to the streets of America like the Occupy Wall Street movement has done to send a clear message that the 99% of us will no longer be ignored or abused. We need to unite with environmentalists, with students, with unionists, with immigrants, with people of color, with small business people, and anyone else who shares our vision for a more just society. Their fight needs to be our fight. And our fight needs to be their fight. We need to support and encourage workers to join a union because that is how they can be strong enough to win the We need to organize our votes for 2012 and beyond. The politicians are supposed to work for us and not for the corporations and for the rich. And by God, if we organize our votes, we will make sure that they do work for us or they need to go find another job. Yeah. Yeah. legislation. They changed our country forever. And part of that proof of that change is that today we have an African-American president. And brothers and sisters, more recently, look at Egypt. Look at Tunisia. And yes, look at Ohio. 